Hello friends, I'm Dr. Meeta Gherte and I'm reader in Department of Pediatrics from Motiwala Homeopathic Medical College. Today, I'm going to take you to the series of lecture in Dermatology. Friends, we know that around 20 to 30 percent of patients who visit our clinic have dermatological problems. And dermatology has very good scope in homeopathy. Today, I'm going to teach you a topic which is very common, which is chronic, non-infectious and which is having very good cure in homeopathy. So I hope you have understood the topic that I am going to teach you. Yes, you rightly guessed, I am going to teach you psoriasis today. Today's lecture is intended for student of 4th BHMS and I expect that at the end of my lecture, you should be able to understand definition and pathophysiology of psoriasis. You should be able to diagnose psoriasis and differentiate it from other clinical conditions. You should be able to formulate a plan of management by treating psoriasis. So let us start. I start with a very basic definition. Friends, definition is very important when explaining any topic, even when writing a paper. Your definition should be comprehensive and should give gist of the problem. You need not uh, rectify the definition, you, you can make it yourself. Let us see definition of psoriasis friends. Psoriasis is defined as common, chronic, non-infectious, papulosquamous disease of skin characterized by well-defined, slightly raised, dry, erythematous papules with silvery scales and typical extensor distribution. Now let us understand what this means. I said psoriasis is common. Common because around 2 to 4 percent of people suffer from psoriasis. Don't Prevalence is more common in temperate countries as compared to tropical countries. India also now has prevalence of 2.8% because of our changing lifestyles. Then I said that it is a chronic problem because it runs a long course. It has its own exacerbations and remissions. I said it is non-infectious and a papulosquamous disorder, papulosquamous means a disorder of skin which is characterized by papules which have scaling. So it comes papulosquamous disorder of skin where papules are erythematous and has a silver scaling and has typical extensor distribution. Let us come to etiology. What is the cause of psoriasis? Friends, cause of psoriasis is not clearly understood. But it has been postulated that psoriasis has familial hereditary trait. It has been seen that if one parent suffers from psoriasis, then there are 30% chances that sibling will have, that uh, offspring will have psoriasis. And if both parents suffer from psoriasis, then there are chances that offspring will have 60% chances of having psoriasis. Now, precipitating factors of psoriasis, it has been seen that anxiety, mental stress, trauma, fevers, digestive upsets are some of the common precipitating factors causing psoriasis. Pathophysiology of psoriasis. Psoriasis is a disorder of hyperkeratinization. What does hyperkeratinization mean? Hyperkeratinization is formation of skin cell. And hyperkeratinization means excessive formation of skin cell. Now let us understand why this happens. Friends, it is being said that people who suffer from psoriasis, even they are not manifesting symptom, still they have something called as latent psoriasis. That means a defective gene which when uh, under the influence of a precipitating cause will manifest itself. Here the manifestation takes place in few of the cells of the skin where 
anaerobic and oxidative uh, metabolism increases. Now because of increased metabolism, there is excessive production of skin cells. Now we know friends that skin cells are produced in the basal layer of skin that is stratum germinator. And from basal layer to upper layer that is stratum cornea, it takes almost 4 to 5 weeks right and then they are shaded off and they are being continuously replenished. But in psoriasis, this process is hastened. It becomes very fast. Here, instead of 3 to 5 days, merely in uh, 3 to 5 weeks, merely in 2 to 5 days, a cell from the basal layer comes to the upper layer, that is stratum corneum, and stays there for some time, and then it is flaked off. Right? So, this is the reason behind hyperkeratosis. Now imagine friends, if suppose a machinery which can give a production of say uh, 5000 cell now has to give a production of 20,000 cell. Will the workload not increase? It will increase and if workload is increased, do you think that the product that is formed will be a good product or will it be an average product? You said it right, it will be an average, not a very good product. So same thing happens in psoriasis also, that cells which are formed are not exactly like the normal cells of the body, rather they are partially cornified cells. This process is called as parakeratosis. Now since they are partially cornified cells, they are loosely attached. And since they are loosely attached, they have tendency to shade off. And this is the reason why we see scaling in case of psoriasis. Now because there is increased production of cell, naturally the raw material that is needed will also be, have to be provided in excess. Same thing happens, raw material which is carried through the blood vessels have to be provided in excess. As a result, blood vessels become dilated and become torturous, right? Now since blood vessels are dilated, full of blood, naturally the hydrostatic pressure will increase. As a result, there will be exudation of fluid. This results into two things, edema as well as erythema. Plus, this fluid will get collected at few spaces and this will result into small abscesses which are called as micro abscesses of Monroe. Right? So here you see that there is parakeratosis and there are micro abscesses of Monroe. Similarly, the layer which is above stratum germinator, malficia layer, it gets thinned off. Reason is the same. There is dil uh, dilated torturous capillaries and there is edema and infiltration around the cells. Right? So this was pathophysiology of psoriasis. Now I take you to a picture. You see here friends, that this is normal um, epidermal layer and this is epidermal layer of psoriasis where you are seeing that there is thickening because of edema and you are seeing that there is flaking because of parakeratosis, right? Now clinical features of psoriasis. Since if you have well understood pathophysiology, then it is very easy to understand clinical features of psoriasis. Lesions are maculopapular, that means discolored, slightly raised lesions. They are dry, they are well defined, they are erythematous, and they show scaling, which is silvery white in color. There is typical extensor distribution. Uh, we don't know why, but it is seen that in psoriasis, extensor surfaces are more involved as compared to flexor surfaces. Of course, friends, this is not the rule. There is a variant of psoriasis which is called as flexural psoriasis, when you can have a flexural distribution also, but this is very rare. Common is extensor distribution. It shows three important signs. Now, this you need to remember. These three signs are candle grease sign, auspice sign, and Kovner's phenomena. Now, let me explain what are these signs. 
First, let us come with candle grease sign. Suppose, friends, that you take a candle, right? And if you take a scalpel, and if you try to gently, you know, uh, move your scalpel over the candle, what will happen? Grease will come out like flakes, will it not? Same thing happens with a lesion. If you take a scalpel and if you try to erode the lesion, you will see that like a candle grease, flaking will take place. Since this resembles candle grease, the sign is called as candle grease sign. When you have, once you have removed all the flakes, now because capillaries are dilated, they will rupture. Since they rupture, you will see small pinpoint hemorrhagic points. Once you have removed all the scales, this sign is called as auspice sign. Okay. I repeat, it is called as auspice sign. There is one more very peculiar thing about uh, psoriasis and that is that lesion of psoriasis will uh, come on the area which has undergone trauma. That means, if suppose you have scratched a skin, then on the scratched surface, this psoriatic lesion will appear. This phenomena is called as Cogner's phenomena, that is localization of disease takes place on the part of injury. This phenomena is called as Cogner's phenomena. Friends, there are only three diseases where you see Cogner's phenomena. One is psoriasis, second is lichen planus and third is what? Very important question, I repeat, there are only three diseases where Cogner's phenomena is manifested. These diseases are psoriasis, lichen planus and warts. Now, this is again very important that itching is minimal in psoriasis. You know, usually we think that all dermatosis each, especially when it comes to psoriasis, but remember psoriasis doesn't each much Eaching is a prominent feature of eczema, right? But psoriasis doesn't eat much in our country because we stay in a hot and humid climate. Minimal eaching is there, but I again say it is minimal eaching. Only some variants of psoriasis like flexural psoriasis may show eaching. So if suppose in your patient you are seeing that there is a lot of eaching, this can be a characteristic feature of prescribing. Now, uh, this uh, eruptions have its own exacerbation and revision. Now, what do you mean by this? I had seen a doctor prescribing for uh, psoriasis and he gave a dose and fourth or fifth day psoriasis went off and he claimed that he had cured psoriasis. But mind well, be very careful. Do not do this because psoriasis has its own exacerbations and revisions and it is seen that psoriasis exacerbates in winter and remits in summer. In rainy season you may have few episodes of exacerbation but I repeat that psoriasis exacerbates in winter and it remits in summer. This is a phenomena which distinguishes it from lichen planus because lichen planus will exacerbate in summer and it will remit in winter. So these are very important features, clinical features of psoriasis. Areas of prelediction. Psoriasis is more commonly seen on extensive surface of the knee, very commonly seen on trunk, skull, palms and soles and nails. Friends, now I take you to few pictures of psoriasis. Please pay attention here. This is psoriasis of knees. Do you appreciate erythematous base with scaling? Again, psoriasis of knees, patch on the trunk, maculopapular, erythematous patches on the trunk, gutate psoriasis. This is a form of psoriasis wherein the patches of psoriasis appear small in size. That means a split pea size, small patches, you know, which is called as gutta. From gutta word comes guttate psoriasis, nothing very different but you can have this guttate psoriasis is usually a very severe form of psoriasis because the whole body can be, uh, you know, you can have uh, 
contain fluid acids over the whole body in form of small such uh, papular lesions with scaling. Now see this. This is psoriasis of nails. Can you appreciate this pitting on the nail plate? You, can you see this? Now, this is feature of psoriasis of nails. I'll show you some more pictures. This is psoriasis of nails. This is again psoriasis of nails. Now friends, what happens in, sorry. What happens in psoriasis of nails is hyperkeratinization takes place at the base of nail plate. As a result, nail plate detaches itself uh, and hyperkeratotic debris get deposited behind the nail plate. Such type of pitting is seen on the nail plate which is called as thimble pitting. Will you remember? It is called as thimble pitting. Now friends, you will, you can, you will have to differentiate this from another condition which commonly affects nail. And that is called as oncomycosis. Oncomycosis is fungal infection of nails, very commonly seen in uh, you know washerwomen, in people who work in laundry who are continuously exposed to water. Here, the fungus has tendency to attack the nail from the nail plate on the upper side. So the upper side of the nail plate will always be affected and will be eaten and nail plate will become weak and it will start crumbling. Whereas the nail bed is usually not affected unless the disease is very progressive. This is not the case in psoriasis. In, in case of psoriasis, you will see that nail bed is first affected and then nail plate is affected. See, this you can appreciate here. See, nail bed is more affected as compared to nail plate. Exactly opposite is in oncomycosis, that is uh, fungal infection of nails. Again, thimble pitting that I showed you. Do you remember? That is only seen in psoriasis of nails, but that is not seen in oncomycosis, right? This is psoriasis of scalp. It is called a very beautiful name. It is called as psoriatic corona. Corona, crown. Now why crown? Because uh, it's interesting to know that psoriasis affects only the borders of scalp and not the actual scalp. So the lesion of psoriasis you will see will be something like this. You know only the borders of scalp will be affected. Behind the ears, sorry. Only the borders will be affected. You know the margins will be affected whereas actual scalp will be, will not be affected, right? You will have to differentiate this condition from seboric dermatitis. Because seboric dermatitis also shows similar type of exfoliation or flaking. Now how to differentiate it? It's very interesting. Seboric dermatitis is actually a type of eczema wherein excessive sebum is formed. Now we all know friends that sebum is very sticky. So if a person has seboric dermatitis, he will have a sticky hair. And on this sticky hair, he will have dandruff and this dandruff will get stuck on the skull. So you will actually have to erode it from the skull. Big flakes are present and, in, uh, and your margins will be spared. Now since this is an eczema and previously also I told you that eczema means itching. So there is lot and lot of itching in seboric uh, dermatitis whereas in psoriatic corona, itching is Minimal. Do you get that? Itching is minimal in psoriatic corona. Scalp will be spared off and uh, you know lesion will be present only on the margins. Again, uh, you know, uh, uh, fungal infection of scalp, pityriasis or thenia capitis can also be confused with psoriasis. Have you seen that uh, ad of head, head and shoulders? This, 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 and you have all you know small, small, small flakes. On the shoulder, that is tinea capitis. In tinea capitis, since it is a fungal infection 
of skull, you will see that powdery dandruff with itching is how the patient presents. No, unlike corona. Psoriatic corona. Now this is plantar psoriasis. Plantar means palms and soles. Psoriasis which affect palms and soles is called as plantar psoriasis. Children, uh, please remember that plantar psoriasis is easier to treat as compared to other forms of psoriasis because it usually localizes itself. In plantar psoriasis, you will see that there will be hyperkeratosis, so thickening of skin, exfoliation will be comparatively less. But you will have fissures on the affected part and these fissures will be deep and they may bleed. Um, itching will be minimal. Plantar psoriasis affecting soles. Plantar psoriasis once again. Plantar psoriasis affecting palms. Now this is a typical type of psoriasis. Because in the very beginning I told you that psoriasis usually has extensor distribution. But here you will see that there is a flexure distribution. This is called as flexure psoriasis. This is a atypical type of psoriasis. Prevalence of such type of psoriasis is less. This type of psoriasis may have minimal itching and uh, little difficult to diagnose. This is again a variant of psoriasis. Pustular psoriasis. In the beginning, I told you that psoriasis will have dry eczematous papulosquamous eruptions, but here you are seeing that there are pustules. Can you appreciate this? There are pustules. Now, this is again a, a typical form of psoriasis, so please remember psoriasis can come like this, but prevalence is much less. Again, pustular psoriasis affecting feet. Another atypical form of psoriasis, now this may be called as a form of psoriasis or this may also be called as complication of psoriasis because here psoriatic patches appear along with arthritis. This arthritis resembles rheumatoid arthritis and commonly affected joints are wrist joint, sacroiliac joint, ankle joint and knee joint. Here you will see that this space will be reduced and erosion will take place over the bony surfaces. A very typical thing about this type of uh, psoriatic arthropathy is that eruptions and arthritis, they run simultaneously. This type of arthritis is always bilateral, please remember. And as the eruption increases, exacerbates, joint pain also exacerbates. And as the eruption remits, joint pain remits. It can cause crippling of joint. Can you appreciate this picture of psoriatic arthropathica? Another picture of psoriatic arthritis affecting ankle joint. So uh, we have seen few pictures of uh, psoriasis and I hope that by now seeing the pictures of psoriasis, understanding psoriasis will be able to diagnose it. But you will have to differentiate it from, we have already discussed this, psoriatic corona, seboric dermatitis, tinea anguina which is or oncomycosis which is fungal infection of nails. And it also has to be differentiated from a very similar looking condition which is called as lichen planus. Now how to differentiate it from lichen planus? I won't tell you right now friends because I am going to tell my next lecture is going to be on lichen planus. So I want you all to see the lecture and you yourself then differentiate psoriasis from lichen planus. So we come to diagnosis of lichen planus. Family history of psoriasis, sorry, diagnosis of psoriasis, family history of psoriasis, typical distribution, erythematous lesion with silvery scale, candle grease sign, auspice sign, homeless phenomena, little or no itching and seasonal variation. This is how we are going to diagnose psoriasis. And now a very important part that is treatment of psoriasis and I know that you all are eager to know that how psoriasis is treated. 
I have divided treatment into two parts. First part will be general management and the next part will be homeopathic management. We come to general management of psoriasis. Because we know that stress is a precipitating factor in case of psoriasis. Stress management is very important in case of psoriasis. Otherwise, it can act as a maintaining cause. Please remember, it can act as a maintaining cause. Improvement of general health by good diet as well as exercise is essential. Study the exciting causes of psoriasis. Try to eliminate those exciting causes of psoriasis. It is seen that moderately warm climate will cause soothing for psoriasis patient. Sulfur spring baths are also advocated in treating psoriasis. But friends, if you are treating with homeopathy, Master Hanuman says that please do not use sulfur baths to treat psoriasis as it may cause suppression of symptoms. And you know that if psoriasis is suppressed, it can lead to a number of other maladies. So please do not use sulfur spring bath, though it is advocated by conventional line of treatment. Cut down on animal uh, proteins, cut down on fats. Ayurvedic herb, ashwagandha, that is Vithanya somnifera, has shown to be a very, having very good effect in case of psoriasis. Otherwise, non-specific treatment is used in conventional line of treatment. I come to uh, homeopathic management of psoriasis. Uh, first, let us come to scope of psoriasis. Does psoriasis have scope in homeopathy? Yes, it has scope in homeopathy. Uh, rather, uh, you can treat uh, psoriasis very well, not only palliate, but you can treat psoriasis very well using homeopathic medicine. You can manage both acute exacerbations of psoriasis and also you can manage the uh, decrease in frequency and intensity of symptom in case of psoriasis. Organon point of view, uh, Surya, Master Hanuman has labeled psoriasis under uh, local melodies under aphorism 286 where he says that such type of diseases are local diseases which are caused due to internal cause, due to miasmatic cause and he advocates that only internal remedy should be used in case of psoriasis. He strictly prohibits the use of external medicated applications in case of psoriasis if suppose patient has lot of itching. Now friends please remember always a dry eruption can cause itching. So if you want to elevate this itching, you can use a coconut oil, you can use petroleum jelly, something which is not medicated, you can use it. But please do not use any external application like graphitis uh, lotion or sulfur lotion. Please avoid it. There are n number of reasons why you should avoid it. But the most important is that it can cause palliation but not the cure. Acute prescription sensoriasis, when there is exacerbation, then you will have to select a remedy based on acute totality. When you are considering acute totality, some of the points that you need to stress upon are find out what was the exciting cause, what was the precipitating cause, find out where is exact location of psoriasis, find out what is difference in morphology from the common features of psoriasis. Also, find out what are the modifying causes in case of psoriasis this will uh, in the case of exacerbation so this will help you to make an acute totality of symptom and you can prescribe on acute totality of symptom some important remedies that can be used during acute exacerbation are arsenic especially when there is lot of burning associated with itching and when burning is better by application of warmth when your patient is restless and anxious, you can think about arsenic, when there is lot of flaking, when flakes are uh, bigger in size, too much of exfoliation, then think about arsenic iode, when there are cracks, fissures, especially on the tip of fingers and toes, think about petroleum, graphitis, when dry lesion, very useful remedy, when discharges are minimal, uh, Sulfur, Merck salt, Surinam are some of the other acute remedies which will be selected.